हाय एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास मेडिकल कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड माय एवी पेज डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास कॉन्सेप्ट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट फ्रॉम आंध्र प्रदेश इंडिया आई एम आल्सो द मेडिकल ऑथर ऑफ द बुक फोकस्ड न्यूरोलॉजी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक कुशिंग्स रिफ्लेक्स द इंपेंडिंग कैटास्ट्रोफी Cushing's reflex and the impending catastrophe. Cushing's reflex indicates an in impending catastrophe because of the raised intracranial tension. Because of the raised intracranial tension, it goes and impinges on the brain stem, especially medulla oblongata, and produces Cushing's reflex. which is nothing but a triad of cushing's findings so what is the cushing's triad it contains it consists of hypertension bradycardia and irregular respiration the chain stokes respiration so the components of cushing's triad are hypertension bradycardia and irregular respiration the chain stokes respiration so the cushing's triad is because of the cushing's reflex which is caused by an increased intracranial pressure which compresses the brain stem especially the medulla oblongata but to understand the pathophysiology of cushing's reflex we need to understand about the intracranial pressure and the monro kelly hypothesis what is it which is making the blood to perfuse the brain the cerebral perfusion pressure the dynamics of the cerebral perfusion it is it goes by an equation cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure a very very important equation cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure what does this imply if we need to increase the blood flow to the brain the cerebral perfusion pressure either we need to increase the blood pressure the mean arterial pressure or decrease the intracranial pressure then only there will be good cerebral perfusion pressure on the contrary the intra cranial pressure increases due to space occupying lesion or the mean arterial pressure decreases the cerebral perfusion pressure decreases so the cerebral perfusion is directly proportional to the mean arterial pressure and indirectly proportional to the intracranial pressure and therefore we need to always concentrate on the intracranial pressure try to decrease it otherwise the cerebral perfusion pressure gets impaired right but what is it which decides the intracranial pressure the intracranial pressure the determinants of intracranial pressure is wonderfully explained by monro kelly hypothesis monro kelly hypothesis we have the overlying skull so underneath the skull there are three important parts one the brain second the blood third the cerebrospinal fluid these three components forms the they form the constituents of the intracranial compartment so the intracranial compartment basically contains brain blood cerebrospinal fluid pressure cerebrospinal fluid so if there is a space occupying lesion in the brain the pressure increases to compensate the pressure increase the cerebrospinal fluid either should decrease or the blood pressure should decrease this is known as compensatory phase but when the increase of the brain is is at the expense of the brain and the csf but if they cannot compensate then the intracranial pressure rises 
when there is a space occupying region in the brain it tries to expand to decrease the pressure the intracranial pressure but then there is the overlying skull the bone which limits the expansion of the brain and therefore since the brain cannot expand upwards because of the overlying skull it goes downwards and impinges on the brain stem resulting in the impending catastrophe the cushing's reflex initially the raised intracranial pressure to some extent can be compensated by the outflow of the cerebral spinal fluid into the spinal canal so there's some space for the brain to expand but beyond which it cannot expand because the csf cannot drain further into the spinal canal and the blood also cannot be allowed to let out completely so the brain cannot expand outwards because of the overlying skull so it goes and compresses the brain stem producing a raised intracranial pressure and the cushing reflex so if we understand this basic pathophysiology then we can understand the cushing's reflex so cushing's reflex indicates an impending catastrophe it contains cushing's triad of hypertension bradycardia and irregular respiration so if we see any person any patient with a space occupying lesion like a brain tumor or edema or herniation or abscess having hypertension bradycardia or irregular respiration we have to be very very careful it is a warning sign of an impending catastrophe perhaps even mortality so we have to be very very careful so we have to always look out for this cushing's reflex and if it is there we have to be more careful and more cautious but what is the mechanism of the increase of hypertension and bradycardia when there is an increase in intracranial pressure it activates the hypothalamic sympathetics and causes hypertension so that's the mechanism of hypertension and when there is hypertension it activates the carotid baroreceptors and causes an increase in reflex reflex parasympathetic activation and results in bradycardia the increased intracranial pressure affects the cortex and causes change to respiration so these three are the components of the cushing's triad so cushing's reflex indicates an increased intracranial pressure and an impending severe brain stem dysfunction the catastrophe so how do we treat it when we see such a such a an impending disaster which is going to take place soon how are we going to approach we have to be emerge we have to treat emergently we have to reduce the basic intracranial pressure and how do we reduce the intracranial pressure we can hyperventilate as we as i said in the earlier part of the lecture the components contains the brain cerebral spinal fluid and the blood and therefore when we hyperventilate there is a cerebral vasoconstriction decreased blood to the brain so when there is a decreased blood to the brain the blood compartment gets reduced the brain can expand to some extent but we should not unduly hyperventilate so as to cause hypoxemia so hyperventilation we can give barbiturates sedation so as to decrease the metabolic requirement of the brain so we give barbiturates manitol and osmotic diuretics which draws fluid into the plasma and decreases the edema and then neurosurgical intervention craniectomy removal of the of the bone flap so as to allow the brain to expand as i said when there is too much of raised intracranial pressure it can go and compress so there can be a decreased cerebral perfusion so to increase the cerebral perfusion we have to carefully increase the mean arterial pressure so that the cerebral perfusion increases controlled increase in the mean arterial pressure so these are the emergent measures we take in to tackle cushing's reflex which indicates an impending catastrophe and impending doom which may be even mortality so we have to act emergently and give a very very fast and acute treatment 
I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my BPH, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.